Folks, it is the summer of Chevy, and this summer promises to be the most explosive yet so long as our Jets general manager is not at the summer cabin by the lake. But for all intents and purposes, the Jets seem to be aware of what's coming. The question is, are they actually prepared for the right kinds of returns? We'll dive into all of that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Jets fans? Welcome to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge, but most of all, we just really love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, sportsbook official, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Now, like I said, top of the episode, this is the summer of Chevy. And more so than any other summer of Chevy, this is the Cheviest of summers. <laughs> uh, if you know what I'm talking about, we always joke about the summer of Chevy being, oh, this is the big off season where Chevy is going to have to make a big deal. This is the one where he's going to have to make roster moves. This is the one that's going to shape the Jets. And every season, we're disappointed. I mean, a couple of times, Shovel Day Off has, has made a, a, a major acquisition or trade. But usually, it's not until the Jets are forced to that we really see Winnipeg move heaven and earth to have some kind of a deal happen. Even when Jacob Trubo was kind of running down his contract, and made it clear that he wanted to move elsewhere for his girlfriend, you know, it, it it was clear that the Jets were kind of being a little reactionary. I think that there is virtue and patience, but sometimes the Jets are a little too patient. And that, I think, is a really difficult balance to strike. But this time, the Jets are kind of up against the clock. I know that we said last episode, Winnipeg is on the clock. I would probably say the more accurate phrasing, to be honest, might be that they're up against it. This is probably one of the most critical uh off seasons and summers in any professional sports team that has played in Winnipeg in part because you're talking about some of the most core critical pieces and the Jets have this strange vision of wanting to compete with this team so for me I I kind of feel like that's not really being truthful I think the Jets are probably more aware of what's coming than they're letting on uh either that or they're just not really aware of the situation and the state of the team, and they feel that they are closer than they really are. But my guess is the Jets are probably pretty smart about where this team is. And, uh, you know, the the biggest concern right now is attendance. If this team craters next season, they got to find a way to put butts in seats. And so trying to sell this team as still being competitive, trying to appease the players, I I suppose, is what their their marketing and, and their messaging is going for. But I think at the end of the day, you know, this offseason has the potential to really change Chevy's legacy forever, in part because the players that we're getting rid of are guys the Jets have held on to for years, players they've been, they've developed internally. Uh, Dubois, of course, is not on that list, um, and Wheeler, of course, to an extent, is not really on that list either, just because he did come externally. But, you know, Hellebuck, Shifley, those guys were draft and develop and were poised to be two of the most important contributors to this franchise ever. And, you know, you're going to have to ship them off. I don't know when I guess this is all going to shake out because the draft is coming up. And so far, you know, the only deals that we've really seen are outside Winnipeg. There's like the Provorov trade. There was the Severson free agency deal. Uh, So, you know, generally speaking, I think Winnipeg, um, for, for me, I really hope that they don't screw this up. Uh, this is the kind of offseason that can really put the Jets on the right track towards um, a rapid retool, because no matter what they say, that's just going to have to happen. Whether they think they're going to be retooling or being competitive next season, I know for a fact they're going to be retooling. This team's just not going to be good enough to really be a true playoff contender. So 
Winnipeg should be more comfortable with the idea that, yeah, the Jets are probably going to slip in the standings. More than likely, they are uh, going to be in danger of missing the playoffs for a good portion of the season. And you know what? If that's the case, then sell off assets and try and start to think about how you can rapidly turn this team over into something decent. The Jets, you know, with how they're building and where they are, developmentally speaking, they're not as far off as I've perhaps made them sound, but they're also not that close. And I think it's important for the Jets to make the right decisions and the right cuts around the team to shape this roster for the future and give the Jets a fighting chance when it comes to some trades. Because as it is, we know that free agency is usually not kind to the Jets, and it's very hard to get guys to extend here. So I think it's really important that the Jets identify maybe some underrated talent, maybe some guys with some chips on their shoulders and a, a point to prove, players who have you know room to develop and grow. I know somebody was saying Byfield was terrible and you know, why would the Jets ever trade for him? But the thing with the talent like Byfield or with Lafreniere is that you kind of have to bet on them because the players that you're going to get back if you really are trading for roster players are either going to be, you know, players who are projects or they're just not that good. And Winnipeg really can't afford to take on salary for guys like Scott Lawton, Tom Wilson, players who don't really fit the direction the Jets are going and who are, you know, on the wrong side of their late 20s or early 30s. So Winnipeg really needs to focus on guys who are uh, maybe on the outs with their organizations, especially those who had like really high talent ceilings, because there's a chance that you can unlock it and they might become a pivotal part of your team's future a lot faster than just trying to pick up guys from the draft, especially because these players in particular were drafted with such impressive previous pedigrees and histories. It would be a, a shame to see them continue to rot with their current teams, and Winnipeg will have more than enough opportunities to give some of these young talents a chance to restart their career and try over or, and start over and, and try again. I think Gabe Velarde is like a really good example of what happens when you're persistent and you don't give up on a player. You know, he got he went through some really career uh, endangering injuries and stuff that made it look like he'd never play at the pro levels, uh, especially at the NHL level, but he. He persisted, they helped him through it, and look where he is now. He's one of their true breakout stars in L.A. So for the Jets, I think that is what they need to really prioritize. But like I said, the Jets have this hesitance, and I want to talk about why this hesitance is a really big problem if the Jets are trying to wait out the market and see what shakes out, because Winnipeg really, like I said, is up against the clock. We'll talk about that particular problem in just a moment, but before we go any further, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at FanDuel. Make your way to FanDuel right now because new customers can get a no-sweat first bet of up to $2,000 or $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. A lot of you might be tracking the MLB season, and there is no better time to get in on the action or like, what, 70-ish games through the year? Uh, a lot of surprise teams as an Orioles fan. I'm sorry for you, Jays fans. Uh, it's been a, a roller coaster ride of a season, but Baltimore has seemingly rallied and become a, a true, maybe even World Series contender. And if you're interested in tracking along and casting bets on the O's or the Blue Jays or any other team in the MLB, there's no better place to do it than FanDuel. You can get in on all of the playoff action and regular season action with America's number one uh, sports book. It's safe, secure, and you get paid instantly. So, Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet of up to two thousand five hundred dollars. That is two. Uh, that's that's FanDuel.com slash locked on for two thousand five hundred dollars back in bonus bets. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day, every day. Or thank you for rejoining us on tonight's show. We were just talking about how this is the summer of Chevy, if there ever was to be a summer of Chevy. We still haven't had one yet, but maybe this will actually be the one. But like I said, the Jets have expressed hesitance in how they approach the trade market and what they, you know, what they expect back in return. The reality is the Jets are asking for uh, competitive roster players, and you're just not going to get that. No matter what Winnipeg says, no matter what they think, you're not going to get guys who really help your team out particularly much right now you could get some players who are kind of in the middle tier uh of, of impact but have potential to grow further with expanded roles and continued nhl experience these guys would have to be in their early 20s or something because the jets 
I believe their timeline is more like three years or so before I think they'll be rel- you know, relatively good for a playoff run again. That's not to say that they couldn't do it faster, but I just feel like unless some amazing goalie comes in that and this Jets team really takes off over the next season or two, I, I think three years is probably the best bet. That's probably when Brad Lambert might start to fil- filter in. Maybe Rucker McGroarty comes in. Declan Chisholm will probably be a bit of a mainstay at that point. So you want to make sure that you have the timing right. And if you get a guy who's like 22, 23, that means by age 26, 27, uh, roughly when they're kind of finishing out their most productive years um, and really still in at least a, a season or two of their prime left, you get some pretty good congruency and alignment of of age curves and stuff to try and give yourself at least a couple more seasons of top end competitiveness because you want those you know mid to late twenties guys to be um, part of your your core and then you fill around them with really good young talents and bargain buys. That's kind of how the Jets did it in 2017, 2018, and that's how they could potentially do it again if they're smart this uh, coming off season and beyond. But For me, I feel like the Jets are hanging on to this idea that the team is not as bad as it seemed or uh, as it has been in the past. And that is true. I think this Jets team, even with the the losses that they're likely to encounter this offseason, at least in terms of how they play at even strength and stuff, I think that they will still be relatively okay. I think they'll tread water. But because the goaltending is going to be a problem, because they're going to have issues finishing most likely, just like they did this year, I don't really see a scenario where the Jets don't take a considerable step back and Winnipeg ends up having to retool anyways. And so for me, if the Jets make the mistake of hanging on to a couple of rental players like Shifley or Dubois or something and don't move them until the trade deadline, the Jets are going to lose the leverage that they have right now. As it is, Winnipeg is currently the hottest name in every single trade discussion. No one goes past any sort of trade rumor list without seeing Winnipeg at the very top. And so for the Jets, this is the best time to field offers. And if they're worried about, you know, competitiveness, it might mean that, you know, the offers that they've gotten so far aren't quite where they were hoping. But if I'm the Jets, you know, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. And at some point, Winnipeg is going to come to a a realization that the offers that are continuing to come in are starting to, to decline as other suitors find alternatives, better players, uh, or just better prices for 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 their value, you know, Winnipeg is going to realize it's held on to assets too long and be stuck with guys who are going to walk in free agency. Now, I don't think they're going to let that happen. I think we're going to see a lot of departures this offseason. But, you know, for the Jets, I think the most important thing is don't overcook your hand. This is a time when you really can't be hesitant. You're going to have to be aggressive. You're going to have to face up to the situation and attack it head on. One thing that has been rumored is that Blake, you know, is that Blake Wheeler is going to be bought out sometime in the next week or two. I would be a little bit surprised if they do it, just because he's been a mainstay here for ages. But if they're trying to kickstart this new youth movement and give the room over to the younger players, I guess you could, you know, you could buy out Wheeler. I don't know if it really will help the Jets so much if they're not really interested in using that cap space. So, in terms of just I guess saving some money, maybe it helps them. I really couldn't tell you what it'll do for their cap situation in terms of giving them flexibility because most likely the Jets aren't really going to be acquiring anyone that's all that expensive. Unless they really surprise us and bring in a big name, that cap space that Wheeler will you know, give up a little bit of, it's not going to be particularly exciting or worth it. So yeah, all I can say is it's probably going to be more of a symbolic gesture and a way to essentially get him off the team and bid him farewell but yeah i mean what is it worth at this point i really couldn't tell you uh this jets team seemingly has so many conflicting priorities and all i hope is that they choose the right one but speaking of trades and stuff i think winnipeg is going to be the team that kind of kicks off the real trade frenzy and we'll talk about how winnipeg can kind of set the market um at least for for itself here in just a little bit Hello, friends, and welcome back to this Closing Thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. With the trade season about to kick off for Winnipeg, I think it's important for the Jets to keep in mind that they can kind of set their own prices and really 
um, avoid the pitfalls of, of trying to rely on other teams to set the market because most trades don't really have a tremendous impact on the trade values of other packages. Once in a while, it does happen and you may see some alignment, but generally speaking, we've seen all sorts of variances in trade packages and teams have a really hard time getting over the fact that their lottery ticket stuff really isn't worth as much as guaranteed NHL performance. And I think that for me is where the Jets could really make some hay, uh, especially if they're trying to rebuild and maybe offer more for, for futures. I think if you give up Kelly and Shifley and guys like that for uh, top picks, maybe some really talented young prospects who are closer than further away to the NHL, I think that could benefit the Jets greatly. Now, in terms of the teams that I think Winnipeg has the most to gain from, it's got to be teams like L.A., um, the, the Devils, and to a lesser extent, Buffalo. Now, if the Jets were to maybe make some kind of a deal with the Florida Panthers, that could be very interesting. I don't really think that there's any sort of cap room for the Panthers to acquire any of Winnipeg's major players, but maybe there's like a salary exchange. I really couldn't tell you how that would work out. Um, but <laughs> suffice it to say the Panthers are going to be frustrated with how their cup finals went. Maybe they want to take a stab at moving some salary um, and bringing in a major rental to try and push them over the edge. But that I think is a very unlikely and unrealistic scenario. I think LA, New Jersey, uh, and one other team I was trying to think of just now, I, I lost it, but, um, oh, it probably would be the Rangers. Another team that is really tied up against the cap. Uh, they could be interested in maybe a Dubois or a Shifley. I think everyone might look at Dubois first just because he's the younger of the two. And Shifley, you know, I guess in terms of like desirability, right? Everyone knows that Shifley is like an amazing first line center, but people will kind of look at some of his lack of back-checking and effort and wonder how committed he really is. But then you watch Dubois, and I'm not really sure that you walk away with different questions. I kind of feel like he and Shifley have quite a few things in common. But I think the thing that Winnipeg really needs to sell teams on is the idea that they just need the change of scenery. If they move on to teams that they actually want to play for, places they really want to be, uh, teams with a real direction and ambition, they might really start to blossom. I think that's especially true of Shifley. When Mark gives a crap and feels motivated, like I said, he is unstoppable. But the moment that he feels you're not really on the same page with him, it can be some unsmooth sailing if we're being uh, very generous. And that's not to say that Shifley is wrong about his assessment of the Jets. I think that he's probably more on point than any of us would care to admit. But at the same time, he's a professional. You really need him to show up on every single shift or at least as many as he can. And so far, we haven't always seen that. So, I mean, it is what it is. I think we've all kind of accepted it at this point. It'd be nice if if Shifley was really bought in and didn't feel like he was kind of maybe misled this past season. But, uh, you know, the front office really needs to show the team that it's committed to trying to build a winning culture and establishing something successful for the future. And that probably means that, you know, this, this season's going to be rough. This offseason, we'll see some major departures. The regular season probably has a good chance of missing the playoffs. All I can say is <clears throat> we just have to stick through it and get through a couple of lean seasons, and the reward at the end of the road might be really good, so long as Chevy leaves the cabin. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, like I said, I, I'm trying not to be too upset. I do think that Winnipeg might really kick open the trade floodgates. I think uh, the league is really waiting to see what the Jets do, and Winnipeg might be kind of doing that but in the opposite direction, watching how other teams are are trading and what they're up to. And I think for Winnipeg, it's important to kind of get, a, get out ahead of this, really be the ones to be aggressive out there, be proactive, make your moves first, and don't let the trade market drop and the number of suitors go down driving prices down. You really need to get as much as you can right now. And there's never been a time than now. So let's hope the Jets are up for it. But let me know if you think the Jets are going to make a trade in the next week or two. Give your predictions for who stays and who goes in the next 14 days in the comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco or at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. But for tonight's episode, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day every day. We will see you back here tomorrow, maybe even with some trade announcements if the Jets have any for us. But in the meantime, thanks for listening. Have a great night and go Jets go.